2019 is definitely shaping up to be the resurgence era of new metal. We got Korn just released a new song. Slipknot's going to release this new album here pretty soon. I guess Limp Biscuit has played like a new song. If that's your thing. What's going on, guys? My name's Corey Kamori, and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown channel. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Unsainted by Slipknot. Released in 2019, or going to be released in 2019 off of their We Are Not Your Kind album, Unsainted, from my interpretation, touches upon the process of letting go of past trauma and working through trials and tribulations of the past in order to move on and become the person you want to be. The song also seems to be touching upon Corey Taylor's relationship, his love-hate relationship, it seems, with the media and how he's portrayed in the media as a whole. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, so let's back up a second and let's start off with the lyrics. And the song begins with the words, Oh, I'll never kill myself to save my soul. I was gone, but how was I to know? I didn't come this far to sink so low. I'm finally holding on to letting go. I'm just weathering a rough patch. Another villain with an itch to scratch. Denial is the darkest when you live in a hole. Why does the hell make you feel so cold? Make a move and you pay for it. Pick a lord and you pray to it. You're so demanding when you want the truth, but your stories don't read for me. So... Starting off the song, it seems to me like Corey Taylor's talking about, you know, I've gone through all of these hardships in life. Uh, he's opened up numerous times about how he dealt with abuse growing up, homelessness, and, you know, he bounced around from home to home throughout his entire adolescence, really. And, you know, to this day, He's, you know, struggled with all of those things that have occurred. There was a really interesting episode of, oh my gosh, someone in the comments is going to, you know, let me know exactly what the title is, but it was like a, a therapy uh, video session that was hosted by Vice, I want to say, where Corey Taylor went on this show and talked about some of his past traumas and really worked through those past traumas with this therapist and kind of came out on the other side of realizing, you know, that he didn't have to keep holding on to all these experiences. If I find that video, I'll link it for you guys in the description below. It's a really great watch. Um, but this also seems to be touching upon things that have occurred recently for Corey Taylor and potentially the band as a whole. Now, I know in particular Corey Taylor, um, you know, he went through another divorce, which wasn't highly publicized, um, but he, he did go through another divorce, uh, couple of years ago and, you know, really was starting to just, you know, try to find himself again and recently became engaged again, uh, found a person that works, you know, well with his lifestyle and compliments him as a person really well, which congratulations to you, Corey. That's awesome. Um, so it really seems like, you know, this could be pulling the first section of the song could be pulling from that potentially. Uh, it also could be pulling from the fact that he's lost a lot of friends. Uh, you know, we've all lost a lot of people in music that, you know, really gave back to us musically. You know, we, we lost Chris Cornell a couple of years ago. We lost Chester Bennington a couple of years ago. And again, these guys died as a cause of suicide. And, you know, it's something that really, I think, is connected to this chorus in some way or another, because, you know, as he says, I'll never kill myself to save my soul. You know, I'm, I'm never going to just, you know, end all of this so that, you know, I can just be released of this pain, of this tension, of, you know, all of the things that I feed off of and that I am able to infuse in my music, which not only helps me, but helps other people in the process. That's what I think this chorus is really about. Uh, you know, it, it's very vague, but I think that's awesome. I really like the fact that there's so much that can be interpreted from just this chorus alone. Now, moving into the verse section, things get a little different. You know, he talks about he's going through struggles. He's, you know, kind of you know, having to work through a lot of difficulties. Um, 
But what's really interesting is that he's also touching upon the way that he's been painted in the eyes of the metal community from a press standpoint. Now, it's no secret that there are online forums and publications everywhere that are always, Corey Taylor says this, Corey Taylor says that. What do you think Corey Taylor thinks about this song? What do you think Corey Taylor thinks? You know, it just, it's Corey Taylor, you know, sensory overload. And, you know, I think some of that is deliberate because, you know, he's tried to do whatever he can to stay in the zeitgeist by, you know, creating uh, different types of music outside of Slipknot. Uh, obviously, he has Stone Sour. Uh, he's written a lot of books. He's done some he's done a comic book series. So, you know, and he's done some film as well. So, you know, he's he's always trying to figure out new ways to express his creativity, which I think is really cool and really admirable. Uh, but a lot of times. You know, he's also come under fire for, you know, throwing out like, oh, well, Kanye West is a is a piece of shit or whatever. And, you know, he, he obviously he has a very inflammatory uh, personality at times, which I think is deliberate because I know he likes to get under people's skin. And I, I personally think it's hilarious. Um, but I think to a certain degree, you know, he might have been um, painted as the villain a bit in some of these pieces. And. You know, just by him going and sharing his experience and sharing his uh, his insight and thoughts on everything and anything under the sun, you know, it's gotten people to be like, oh, God, here goes another one. Here comes Corey Taylor talking about, you know, what does he think about the flavor of carrot juice or some crap like that? You know, and I think that he's kind of relished in that. He kind of enjoys that. He's like, oh, yeah, you're painting me as a as a villain now, which he's always described how he loves horror he loves horror villains in particular you know he loves michael myers uh you know heath ledger's uh the joker which to me is very telling in um his new stage attire um the mask the 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 trench coat that goes with the mask very much screams to me serial killer mixed with you know heath ledger's the joker and it's i think that that personification that he's decided to take on is really him embracing the idea that he is an agent of chaos and that he's trying to stir the pot. He's trying to create this villainous persona. So again, I think that this verse right here is really just him talking about his experience in life currently. You know, he's going through these trials and tribulations, trying to grow as an individual, trying to let go of the past and you know, not let the past control his future. And at the same time, he's dealing with the struggles and the, you know, all encompassing nature of dealing with the media, dealing with, you know, people talking about him all the time on forums and, and, you know, social media and really his relationship with everything going on. So moving on, we're going to skip the next chorus because it's the same as the opening section. But we're going to talk about the next verse. Indecision overload, keep your buckle on the devil and your eyes on the road, reaching out for the hand of God, but did you think you'd shake your own? This killing field is all grown over, the motherfucker wants it wild. Go sow your oats in alphabetical order, the anti-antagonist is back in style. Myopic, can't see straight, dystopic, one sin too late. You gotta lie if you want to believe, but your Bibles don't work on me. I think this section right here just kind of continues to elaborate on the first section, um, more so focusing from the perspective of what the mind of a villain is really like and how this agent of chaos is really thriving on just the craziness that is our current day and age. So I think that not only is he talking about this from you know the perspective of you know, he's thriving in the chaos that is social media and the media in general, you know, just constantly go, what, what, what do you think, Corey? What do you think, Corey? You know, and he's just kind of, you know, sitting back and, you know, laughing about the fact that, oh my God, look, I have these guys eating out of my hand. I can literally do whatever I want with them. Obviously he has a little more control than that and he's not going to go and manipulate that. But I think that it's interesting that he's really kind of creating this idea of, you know, this is how a villain would operate within these realms of chaos here. But I think it also is touching upon, you know, people like uh, certain leaders in the world that are thriving in the chaos that is our everyday life. The fact that we are always just moving on from, 
you know, one thing to another that is catching our attention and we don't have enough attention to actually focus on the things that matter, we're really getting lost in the weeds here. We're getting manipulated and we're having our strings pulled in ways that are going to be far reaching beyond what we can even see in the here and now. And it's really interesting because he is painting it like a super villain would almost paint it. This is like a puppet master just looking down at his uh, marionettes and just pulling all the strings to get them to line up and do the dance that he wants them to do. So I think it's a really interesting approach and it can really be interpreted from so many different angles, but that's really the approach that I'm going to interpret it from. But I would love for you guys to share your thoughts about what you think this is about in the comments below. Next week, wrap up the song with the words, did you think you could win and fill me in? Did you think you could do it again? I'm not your sin. I was all that you wanted and more, but you didn't want me. I was more than you thought I could be. So I'm setting you free. I'm setting you free. You've killed the saint in me. How dare you martyr me? You've killed the saint in me. This is where, for me, the song gets a little muddied because... I know that a lot of Slipknot fans would just instantly jump to, oh man, this section of the song is clearly about how Chris Fenn fucked over, you know, Clown and, and Corey and, you know, the whole band and basically was trying to sell them out and paint them as money-hungry individuals that were just trying to screw him out of a deal. I, I think a lot of Slipknot fans just instantly jump to that conclusion as this is what the whole song is about. And, you know, I could definitely see that, but... We also have to keep in mind that Chris was a part of the writing process for this album, and I don't think that these lyrics were written just kind of right off at the top of Corey Taylor's head at the last minute. I mean, these albums take quite a while to put together, so I don't think that's necessarily what the song's talking about. The fact that all the things that have transpired have transpired is kind of ironic because it does kind of tie into the drama that the band was going through and is still going through in this current period. Um, but I really don't think that that's exactly what it's about. I think it's just convenient. You know, it seems to me that this is the perspective of the villain saying, well, this is what you people wanted. You wanted me to be out of control. You wanted me to speak my mind. You wanted me to be different from other people. You wanted me to, you know, really wear my heart on my sleeve. And this is what you got. And now you don't like it. You know, now you want to martyr me. And now you want to, you know, string me up by my neck and, you know, hang me for all to see. But this is what you wanted. This is what you people bought into. It seems like that's what this section of the song is really talking about. You know, he's like, drama sells. Uh, inflammatory words sell. Chaos sells. But now you people are saying you don't want this? Well, your actions are proving otherwise. You know, and again, I think this is just Corey Taylor messing around with the idea of what it would be like to be in a villain's shoes and manipulating the masses. But what do you guys think? Did I leave anything out? Do you have any other ideas, any other thoughts as to what the song may be about? If you do, please comment below. Let me know. As always, I've been Corey Kamori. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.